Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about taps. Um, the uh, reason being is that I think that, that although uh, there is a lot of sort of general knowledge and understanding of taps, I think there are a couple of nuances which I've learned about which uh, I think are kind of cool and important to understand and also wanted to talk a little bit about the ways to reliably tap and what, what's important and such. Now one of the things I wanted to start off with is um, if, you're, if you don't own taps or you're looking to buy some more, um, what's the best approach? And I would say that of all um, the things you want to steer clear of, che of going cheap, um, taps are probably one of them. It uh, depends on the material, material that you're tapping into and all that, but um, I, I would say uh, without exception to try to buy American taps. They're usually not very expensive. Um, and you, what I find is you really don't even need all that many sizes uh, and it's well worth it to go quality. Usually when you're tapping apart, if it, if it screws up or worse yet breaks, um, the implications are, are usually not so much fun given that you've already worked on the part or such. That being said, I do own one set from Grizzly here, which is, which is an import set. Um, it's actually not that bad. I haven't had any troubles with it, and it is kind of my general backup. You can see the list um, of what's included here. It's basically it's 8 through 32 all the way up to half by 13. Um, and it also includes um, on each size tap the three different common taps that you see, um, which is a plug tap, a taper tap, and a bottoming tap. And that's one of the first things I wanted to focus on. What I'm holding up here is a taper tap. And what's significant about a taper tap is the number of um, you know, partial threads until you uh, com complete the full threads. What this is, is this allows you to start the tap just a little bit more easily and um, you're taking a smaller chip load because you know once you're, once you're up to this point, you're really not cutting anymore. All the cutting is done um, with these, the taper down here. So by having you know seven or eight threads um, tapered before it completes the full threading, it's just simply a lighter chip load. That compares with the next tap, which is a plug style, which is probably the most common, which is a, just basically a shorter version of a taper tap. It has only about four um, partial threads until it gets to the full thread. And then the, the last one is a bottoming tap. There are two more types of taps I'd like to introduce you to. Uh, what I'm holding up here is a, it's a plug style so you can see in terms of the, how quickly the threads form. It's got that same plug nature to it, but what's different is this is called a spiral point tap. The tap itself comes to a point, and there's this spiral here. And the cool thing about this is that um, it shoots the, the chip ahead. So when you're uh, tapping through, it's still usually good practice to you know, make a full turn and back off and usually a quarter or a half a turn until you hear the chips break. That creates much cleaner taps and it's definitely very important to do when you're using hand taps. But with, um, with this spiral pointed tap, you can get by with less of that or even um, none of our blind holes where you want to draw the chip back out. They have what's called a spiral flute. What this does with the flute action is it actually draws the chip back out of the hole versus the spiral point which pushes the chip ahead of your cut. So for a blind hole this is great. One, I'm not uh, in this video going to discuss um, some of the important things about you know how to tap with respect to the tap size and um, pre-drilled holes and whether you want to drill for 50 or 75 percent and all that. Um, any version of a machinist's handbook or even your MSC or ENCO catalogs have great introduction or basics of taps. There's a lot of information on the web out there, so um, I'll leave that unsaid. What I wanted to discuss uh, now and, and to wrap things up here is just different ways to tap. Um, the cheapest and easiest way is to use uh, a hand tap w uh, involving a handle like this. This is a T, -pat T handle where you can also slide it off to the side to uh, get a little more leverage. Nothing wrong with these. Um, the similar form is um, a guy like this where you can slide the tap in the spot there and tighten it down. Um, the, nothing wrong with these. The problem is that 
it's oftentimes very difficult to get the whole perfectly, uh, the tap perfectly straight, and that can be very important. Um, taper style tap that makes that easier because of um, how far it can set down to start in the hole, but uh, nevertheless, the benefit of this T-handle is it's got this hole in the back which you can then use in a drill press or something to align it upright or your lathe and turn it and keep it straight. Um, I find it's a little bit annoying because by the time you put a your drill chuck in, a guide arm, this, and then your tap, you're, you've got you know a foot taken up in your uh, drill press, which can be just annoying to set up. So I wanted to discuss two different ways um, to tap accurate, uh, reliable holes in materials. The first way, which is less expensive, is to use what's called a tapping block, and I've got the Little Machine Shop handbook here catalog and they've got two different versions which you may not be able to see. So these are commercially sold products um, which basically have a hole that's drilled out that is just the right size to slip the tap through and then you either hold or clamp this tapping block to the part and it basically keeps your taps uh, straight and, and perpendicular to the part. As you can see it costs forty dollars here I would highly encourage anyone that's interested in doing this just to make their own. I think this may be made out of 40, 40 and 40 steel and hardened, but um, th that's not necessary. You can definitely do it out of aluminum or steel yourself, and, and it would certainly work fine. A similar type thing here is a, this ver another version of a V-tap. Um, I think some of them have grooves along the bottom, which allow you to rest it squarely on top of round stock. Um, the great, nice thing about these is they're sort of portable, so you can use them um, anywhere your part is, you don't have to bring your part to a machine. Um, and on that note, I'll show you what I use and what I like, which is this hand tapping machine. I purchased it from Enco. They started uh, putting it on sale. It used to retail for, I believe, $230, and they now have it on sale for $85. And the $85 price, I think, is reasonable. It's made by Phase 2. The $230 price, is, it's definitely not worth it. Um, but here's what I like about it is it uses a collet system right here. So you take you take your tap, you slide it into the collet, and it locks, um, or excuse me, there's a square piece which meets up with the square end of your tap so it won't twist, and then you just snug it down with a screw. Then that slides inside. Oops, let's get that lined up here. Uh, Anyways, I don't have it uh, loosened up right now, but uh, your collet slides inside of your um, column here, and then you can put your part in this sort of vise, which is actually designed to shift a little because it'll allow you to find um, the center of the hole. And then you just simply rotate um, the handle here, which you can see one side's got an oblong um, length to give you some more torque. And then the sort of cool thing about this is it's got this um, steel bar here with a counterweight, and what that does is it allows this to float more easily. That way when you're uh, turning in, uh, forwards and then turning backwards, the tap uh, and column can float vertically without putting stresses on the part you're tapping. Um, I've had it for a couple months now, and I, I've found that I used it more than I um, thought I would, and it's, it's very reliable for making uh, good holes. It's actually quite quite heavy, which can be nice, um, and all in all, just very very happy with it. The only complaint, I guess I would say, is that the collets don't look like they would last for, you know, 50 years. This thing probably will. Um, so, you know, the, the option would be to either make your own or buy replacements or something, but for me and for how much I'm using it for now, it should be fine for quite a while. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed, folks.